All right, time to do a genre I've never done on this show before, the Spaghetti Western. Well, kind of. You'll see what I mean. Get Mean is a 1975 Italian, um, Western, I guess? and is the last of a series of films produced by and starring American actor Tony Anthony as a character called The Stranger. And if you're wondering why I'm starting with the last movie in the series, don't worry, seeing the other ones is not going to help you understand what the hell's going on in this one. Tony Anthony also produced and starred in the 1980s 3D revival movies Coming At Ya and Treasure of the Four Crowns, so I have a feeling this won't be the last time we'll be seeing him on this show. And it's brought to us by Strange Films Incorporated. Yeah, there's the understatement of the year. It's like if Turkish Spider-Man was made by definitely not Marvel Studios. So the movie begins with the stranger finding out what happens when your horse finally gets sick of you riding it. Don't worry though, the horse ends up dying right away. Come on, it's a 70s Italian movie. An animal was gonna be killed at some point, might as well get it out of the way at the beginning. I'm not sure where he is, but I'm glad somebody made a Silent Hill Red Dead Redemption crossover happen. I also don't know the significance of all these weird crystal ball things we keep seeing, but maybe Gypsy Lady here can tell us. In your future, I see a very weird movie. Fun fact, in the Old West, people actually had to knit their own liquor bottles. Okay, let's get the plot of this movie going. That's $10,000. Bullshit, half that pile is pennies. Which would still probably be a lot of money in the Old West. They ask our hero to escort a princess to Spain so she can lead a rebellion against a horde of barbarians that have taken over her homeland. That's not a joke, that's really the plot of this movie. I wasn't kidding when I said Strange Films was an understatement. And just who is this princess, anyway? I have the great honor to present Princess Elizabeth Maria de Burgos. Ah, Discount Sophia Loren. Very nice. Well, I don't know who you are. And I don't know nothing about no barbarians. Hell, I don't even know where this place Spain is you're talking about. And frankly, it sounds made up, like Atlantis or Saskatchewan. I don't know much about our man with no name hero, other than he looks like if Judd Nelson and Armand Asante got in a teleportation accident and fused together. And I'm starting to think this isn't really the Old West. <coughs> Where is the girl? Where is she? Man, season two of Westworld is really weird. Well, at least this leads into the movie's first action sequence. I don't know why the producers of Hee Haw thought they could make a Conan the Barbarian movie. And listen, we couldn't afford an Indiana Jones-style red line, so just burn one right into the map. Although, so far this movie is less silly than Crystal Skull. Okay, looks like they've made it to Spain. You can really tell by the magnificent architecture. What's that? It was built by the Moors when they came here years ago. Uh, excuse me, princess, but I believe it's pronounced moops. Soon after arriving, though, they run into trouble. Well, just as I thought, the cameraman's got the shakes. Okay, actually, it's the barbarians. What about them? The Moors. The what? The Moors. It's moops, damn it. Now, lady, them people are fixing to fonch upon one another. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like I'm going to have to black box it. Man, no one ever told me about the Moorish Barbarian Wars of 1800 Spain. My history teacher was full of shit. <laughs> Ever wonder what Kingdom of Heaven would have been like if it was directed by Alejandro Jodorowsky? Yeah, me neither, but apparently this movie still exists. The Barbarians eventually win the battle, uh, what's their leader's name? Diego. Sure, why not? And I don't know about some of these guys. You stupid woman! You don't understand who you're speaking to! They would buy you 2,000 horses. She's not a princess. She's an ill-bred bitch. Hey, that stereotype is very offensive to barbarians. 
You are the one who doesn't understand. I am a princess. Yeah, well, I think a queen still outranks you, lady. Now that the barbarians have got the princess, what are they going to do with the stranger? Hang him. Hang him! Hang him! Hmm, I get the feeling that guy likes men who are hung. And you're doing it wrong. How's he supposed to masturbate hanging like that? The barbarians then leave, probably to go back to whatever movie they originally came from. You know, I gotta give it to Euro exploitation movies. They really go all out when it comes to pageantry. This movie might not make much sense, but at least it looks nice. And don't worry about the stranger. He soon gets rescued by... I don't know, discount Raquel Welch, I guess? My name is Morelia. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna remember that. She takes the stranger to her castle, because apparently in Europe, everyone lives in a castle. I'm not sure if this is the cup of a carpenter, but it definitely looks like this guy chose poorly. This is the princess's general, who says that she's the only one who can find the mystical treasure of Rodrigo, because I guess there wasn't enough plot in this movie yet. Oh dear god, they got everything in this country! They got everything in this movie, that's for sure. And I think the barbarians just invented guns since we last saw them. It's... Oh, and if you think I'm reaching with the Monty Python thing... You barbarian fellas think it's funny to hang a man by his feet, don't you? I am fully expecting John Cleese to show up as a wizard at any second. What, is this guy supposed to be Genghis Khan? He doesn't look anything like John Wayne. The stranger goes to meet the barbarians, and this time he takes a more diplomatic approach. Great, now you're out of bullets, asshole. I don't know what these are supposed to be, but I'll bet some crew members were wondering where their pets went. After bribing the barbarians with his grandmother's jewelry doesn't work, he offers to lead them to the treasure in exchange for the princess. And since this movie has almost everything else, I guess it's only fitting we have not Alan Rickman as the sheriff of not in the right time period. Have you ever read Shakespeare? Who? <laughs> I don't suppose you would know him. Why not? He's probably standing in the next room. Hamlet, Othello, Richard III. Richard was a very interesting man. He was a hunchback. You might say, he is my idol. All right, Richard. That may have seemed like a compliment, but it's really just his way of saying you're a dick. He makes a deal with the stranger to release the princess in exchange for part of the treasure, but I don't think she's too happy about this arrangement. But I will not go anywhere with this man. I don't care nothing about him, I don't care nothing about that treasure, and I don't care nothing about you. You don't care nothing about anything. Well, that's a double negative. That means I do care something about anything. I think. They leave to find the treasure, but Swishy McStereotype is secretly following them. Not that it really matters, they only go to a church. Turns out the treasure is really just letting Jesus into your heart. Now somebody better tell me what the hell's going on around here. There's the tagline for the movie. The princess learns that in order to get the treasure, she needs to get the Shankara stones from King Solomon's mines and throw them into the fires of Mount Doom, or something like that, I don't know. One thing's for sure, the quest involves our hero traveling into yet another movie. At this point, it wouldn't surprise me if the floating head from Zardoz showed up. <laughs> But this guy randomly turning into a werewolf will. And I guess it's Army of Darkness now? What the fuck? <laughs> Screw spaghetti western. I think this qualifies as a psilocybin western. I don't believe in this kind of stuff. So don't be trying to turn me into no damn wolf. <laughs> and scene. Please tell me this starts making sense. Okay, that doesn't happen. Instead, this does. Oh my god, I'm black and I'm dying! You know what? This movie's included almost everything else. Fuck it. Throw some blackface in there. If this guy starts singing Mammy, I'm out of here. 
And because this movie's apparently trying to outdo Challenge of the Tiger for sheer what the fuckery, he starts fighting a bull. But instead of karate chopping its skull open like fake Bruce Lee, he just runs away like a bitch. Hey, it's my favorite Spanish tradition, the running of the minstrel show. Okay, you escaped. Now wipe that damn grease paint off your face, will ya? He supposedly finds the treasure, which is apparently a medieval My Little Pony doll. <coughs> well, no time to figure out what the hell that just was. Gotta go. I can tell why the stranger's confused. By the looks of it, he accidentally skipped ahead in the movie. What happened? Is what everyone in the audience said after this movie ended. All right, stranger. Whatever time period we're in ain't big enough for the both of us. Where is my treasure? Now you got to get me a doctor. Because I've turned black all over and I think I'm gonna die. Wearing blackface isn't fatal, it just means you're an idiot. And looks like it's time for another plot thread. The scorpion sting! The what? Yeah, the what? Death comes to whoever claims it. They say El Cid had it at Valencia three days later. He was dead. Hmm, mystical MacGuffin. Gotcha. Take it. You take it or I'll drive this dagger through your black throat. This guy's just mad there's something less politically correct than him in this movie. Okay, now that they've captured him, what are they gonna do with him now? Huh. It's weird. I don't remember David Duke being listed as one of the producers. And so the KKK barbarians are about to kill our cowboy hero by roasting him alive. That's a thing I just said. But first we need to have a duel, mainly to remind people that this other girl is still in this movie. <laughs> And now she isn't. Oh, I see they're cooking him while still in his chaps. That really helps to seal in the flavor. However, the stranger gets some help from an unlikely source. You must help me. Anything you want. I want the treasure. I got the treasure. Where is it? Where is it? Boy, he really wants that treasure. What is it, a Barbara Streisand box set or something? <laughs> what? The stranger double-crosses him and gets this guy to give the scorpion sting to the barbarians by shoving balls in his mouth. <sighs> and the barbarians try and get it out of him by using the dreaded mashed potato torture. Oh, and the poster wasn't lying. There really is a four-barreled shotgun in this movie. There's only one way to fight. Get mean. Okay, any complaints I have immediately go away when that thing is on screen. All right, time for the stranger to kick some barbarian ass. Well, that was anticlimactic. You know the penalty, stranger. Death by Snoo Snoo. It's okay, though. He gets away really easily. Ain't no white man alive gonna handle them barbarian horse. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, and if you think that was too stereotypical... I challenge you to a duel. Guns, whips, chains, knives. You insult me. <laughs> Nothing I say is ever going to top this movie. There, Annette. They'll never be able to escape that. Okay, time to defeat the barbarians so they can find the treasure and return the princess to the throne. Or whatever the plot is. You know, it's too bad they didn't save those skeletons from earlier. Otherwise, this really would be the ending to Army of Darkness. Unfortunately for the villains, the extras have had enough of this movie and decide to leave. And continuing with the Army of Darkness references... Good? Bad? He's the one with the four-barreled shotgun. <laughs> But instead of just shooting Diego, he makes him a contestant on Old West Fear Factor. Jesus Christ, will this guy just die already? Paul Rubens didn't take this long to die in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Thank you. Okay, so Diego's dead, but he still has to rescue the princess. You lost your mind! This is my country! This is my kingdom! You can't tell me to leave! 
And you definitely can't tell me not to overact! They also make an important discovery about the treasure. It's Rodrigo's treasure! It's been right here under our noses all the time. Here, in Rodrigo's ancient fortress. Well, that was your own damn fault. You can really tell the stranger's the hero of this movie because he comes with his own explosions to slowly walk away from. And don't blow up the scenery. Now what is this guy supposed to chew? You think I'm just another pitiful hunchback limping my way through life? I am Richard! Richard, king of all of England! And the Oscar goes to... Rather than simply killing him, the stranger challenges him to a duel. Hand cannon versus actual cannon. I know one thing, Richard wins if it's a duel to see who can be more over the top. To delightful measures, Grim visits war! A smooth is wrinkled front! Unfortunately, monologuing seriously compromises your aim. Alright, time to bring this hamminess to an end. <laughs> the king is dead. Long live the king. Or whatever they say. Uh, excuse me, I'm the one sarcastically making fun of this movie? So the stranger saves the princess's kingdom, well, kinda. And we end on another one of those crystal ball thingies. At this point I think even they're not sure what the hell they just saw. Tony Anthony said he wanted to try something a little different with the spaghetti western, and yeah, he certainly does that here. To the point where I'm not sure you could even call this a western at all. To tell you the truth, I don't know what you'd categorize this movie as, other than an off-the-wall mixture of ideas that only 70s psychotronic movies seem to be able to pull off. It's definitely unique, even if it doesn't entirely hang together as a whole movie. So if you've ever wanted to see cowboys, barbarians, hunchbacks, and ghosts all in one place, Get Mean has got you covered. Weirdly, the movie only played in one theater in North America and was never given a VHS release, remaining in obscurity for decades, but in 2015 it managed to get a Blu-ray release, helping to increase interest in it. And who knows, maybe this video will help this movie's notoriety. Because if there's one thing I can accomplish with this show, it's proving to people that these movies are real. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.